Erica, what's the matter, boy? What? Oh, you're having a hard time mapping the pocket to play first-person shooters? I know I have the exact same problem. But you know what? I thought up a solution. Retro Rob plays everything. Hey, Rob here, and today I'm going to talk to you about my solution for dealing with the WASD problem on the GPD Pocket. Assisting me is... Jericho. How's it going, Jericho? Going good? Good dog. So, what is the thing with the GPD Pocket Keyboard? Well, I've complained about it a couple times in videos. Not really complained, but mentioned it because I felt it needed to be mentioned. Um, basically, when you are playing a first-person shooter, the default controls are WASD. And it's done that way for a reason. Ergonomically, it feels good. People are used to playing games that way. That's just the configuration they're used to, and they play well on it. Plus, most of the time, the pocket's not your main computer. So you're going back and forth between your main gaming machine or whatever and the pocket. So it is very difficult to keep retraining yourself to use these two different controller types. I can attest to this because I use an Xbox, uh, Xbox One controller versus the keyboard and mouse all the time. And it is a difficult transition to make all the time. It's just, it doesn't, I'm always fighting the Xbox controller. But anyway, regardless, the problem seems to be when you rest on W, which is your forward key, one of the most used keys, your finger, your middle finger, is shifted off to the left slightly. And moving right and left is okay, but when you go forward, you're shifting your fingers all the time. And it feels like it throws the keyboard off. Now, in the past, I've recommended, hey, lean off to the side. It does help a little bit. I've also recommended remapping to E, which, mm, it's better, but not great. So, in one of my reviews, someone called me out and said, well, you know, you can remap any key, and uh, you can get it to your liking. And I thought that was kind of an inexperienced comment, because I've worked with this thing for a while. And I almost hit the enter button on saying, hey, you know, we've already, I've already shown remaps and that they don't really work. But then I thought, well, what if there is a mapping that can work for this? So I went back to step one, which is what is the difference between this keyboard and a standard PC keyboard? And here's what I found. Here we have the keyboard for the HP Stream. Now, it might as well be any other keyboard. A Mac features the same type of keyboard, so does my Alienware. So does pretty much any other PC. Mostly I want you to pay attention to the letter keys and the middle row of the letter keys. Let's look below it. Here's A, S, and D. If we take A and S and look directly below it, there is the Z key. They are an equal distance apart all the way across the line. It stays that way all the way across the keyboard. But if we look above, look at that. The W is shifted off to the right, as is the Q, and that goes all the way down the board. So when I put my fingers on A and D, my key naturally, naturally rests, not less, on W and can easily hit the S key. So let's take a look at the GPD Pocket again. On the GPD Pocket, let's look. Each row above and below is equal distant now. So what happens is when I'm on the A and the D, my finger naturally rests between the W and E. And because the whole keyboard is like this, there is nowhere on the letters that you can get a natural feel on the keyboard for WASD. It's okay when you're typing because your mind can correct for it, but when you're playing a game, it becomes very crucial. So I basically had to look at the keyboard and see where the conditions that exist on a standard keyboard exist on the GPD Pocket. And guess what? There is a place where this can be done. Go one row up. W. E and R are right here. So this is your down, right, and left. Two is shifted. So you can put your finger very comfortably on the two. And yes, indeed, look at that. 
completely natural. It, it feels absolutely great. So basically, you map your keys up. Now, I found that I can leave most of the other keys intact this way, though. I don't actually need to shift anything except for my reload key or uh, possibly my stab key if you use it because the shift key is still in a pretty natural place. I don't have to stretch my fingers very far to go hit it. In fact, it's almost better. So, there it is. W is used for left. E is used for back. R is used for right. 2 is used for forward. 3 and 4 can be your stabby and reload buttons. Then, remap the 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are usually quick selects, to 7, 8, 9, and 0. Now, I would map them above, but actually, some of these aren't mappable. Uh, you could probably use this one if you want a quick select button, though. A solution for first-person shooters on the GPD Pocket. It really does work quite well. It feels very natural, and you don't really have to retrain your fingers at all. I really do hope this helped you out. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, do me a big favor. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you in a couple days. Bye. Retro Rocks Gaming Videos